Sup, TEDx MSU. Thank you so much for coming out, guys. Really appreciate it. It's a huge honor to be invited to speak at another TED conference. And um, really appreciate the opportunity to be here and share a portion of my story that I've also gleaned from other people that I've met in my life that might be able to help you in your local and your global journey. So for those of you who I haven't met, my name is Jeff George. I was born in Brazil. I grew up there. I've been fortunate to have traveled through tens of countries and, in fact, lived in some of them. Uh, obviously Brazil, but Mexico, Spain, and now continuously in the United States. And I've met hundreds of people in my life, people that made me significantly aware of not just my role and others' roles in the world, but about certain traits related to being a global citizen and globalization that I'd like to share with you today based on my story and what I've gleaned from them. So, as I mentioned, um, you know, if you think back to maybe classes you've taken, uh, perhaps books you've read, Think about the way that people used to exchange information and enlighten themselves uh, through time. And if you think of the modes of communication, right? Started all with the original tablet, right? Cuneiform carvings. Uh, and from that we evolved into the papyrus, the paper. People began to write in scrolls. Scrolls began to get bound into books. Mass printing came through. We now had newspapers and real books. Telegraph, so on and so forth. Radio, television, huge change. Then the internet. And now we started cramming all that stuff into our mobile phones and disseminating it through social media. The volume of information that we exchange today that we consume is the highest it's ever been. And so is the speed at which we consume and share that information. Let's take a look at what happened with mobility, the ability of human beings to get around the planet. Same thing, it started with folks hitching their wagon to horses, right? asking their best buddies to row across the channel. Then we came up with the steam engine and we could do Locomotive travel, farther distances. We took that same technology, applied to transatlantic travel, all the way to where we are today with modern day air travel. Now we go farther distances than we ever did before in the shortest amount of time we ever have. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the barriers to connectivity, communication, our ability to engage with others, to go places, they're the lowest they've ever been. This means, guys, they're in one of the best times in the history of mankind to engage with the world as though we were in our backyard. For the first time in history, we're much more than just local citizens. We're well beyond global citizens. We're global. We're people who travel the world, connect with others, engage with people, make an impact in a way that actually shortens distances and promotes understanding. So let's drill into this concept a little bit more. So as I mentioned, I was born in Brazil. And maybe you can relate to this in your own life, right? When you're a kid and you're growing up, you don't know who you are or who you're not, what you have or what you don't have. But when this atrocious picture of me was taken, I knew two things. One, I knew I was a goofy, goofy kid. <laughs> I always try to be funny. And two, uh, I had plenty to eat. So I knew those two things about me. But I think uh, deep down inside, I also knew I had amazing parents, people who worked extraordinarily hard to make sure that we were provided for. And about three or four years after this horrendous picture was taken, uh, my parents took me to the movies. And we went to see E.T., the extraterrestrial. Raise your hand if you've seen the movie, right? 80s classic. So there's a scene in the movie where Elliot takes the dirty dishes from the table into the sink. And at this point, the camera is panning from the outside of the window in. And I see Elliot open up the faucet, water come out, and steam rise. And my jaw dropped. Because for the first time in my life, I realized that there was a place in the world where hot water came out of the pipes. And I thought to myself, are you kidding me? There's hot water in the kitchen. I'm sure there's some in the bathroom, too. So the movie ended. We got out of the theater, and I asked my parents, where does this whole E.T. Elliot thing take place? They say, it's the United States. Ding, 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 ding. I was done. At that point, I wanted to come here. Somehow, some way, I wanted to come to the US. The reason why I shared that story is because I was presented with a new perspective. That new perspective allowed me to have a different view of the world. And that's one of the really powerful things about new perspectives. They shape your thinking. They give you new alternatives, new aspirations, maybe goals, maybe dreams, maybe hope. And that's one of the hallmarks of global citizens, is they seek to gain a new perspective. They seek to place themselves in situations, meet people experience things that enlarge their view of the world and their place in it. And that's what that movie scene did for me. But it would be a while before I could actually come to the US. 
the economic turmoil of Brazil at the time was very challenged. Uh, we had hyperinflation. And my family was in the lower end of the demographic economic spectrum. And it would be a while before things would get better. Uh, I think I was young enough to perhaps not feel the effects of what the economy was doing to my family. But I was old enough to understand how extraordinarily hard they were had to do and work to get food on the table. But they did. And things got better. Eventually, the economy went on an upswing. So did my family's economic situation. And they got together with me. And they said, look, we know how much you want to go to the United States. What if you were to go back as an exchange student? What do you think? And I'm like, mm-hmm, yep. I don't know when, how, just send me there. So when I was 15 years old, I, for my senior year in high school, I started school a little bit earlier. So um, I came to a small town outside of Cleveland, Ohio, named Illyria. I knew nobody. But I moved in with this family, the, the, the Luca family. And what I found out very quickly in living with these people, they were amazing. We, even though we came from different cultures, different countries, we shared so much of the same values, our love for family, our work ethic, the kind of fun we like to have together. These people are amazing. I found my people. I found my tribe, right? My, my family outside from my one in Brazil. So I began to realize at that point that what happens in our life is largely a collection of the choices that we make, right? But there's a lot that comes from the selflessness of our parents to let go and allow us to explore the world at an early age. But then there's also the people that we meet in life. They influence how things shape in our world. And that's one of the things that local citizens are particularly good at. Wherever they go, they find their tribe. And this tribe could be around cultural heritage. But oftentimes, it's about something more deep, something much more meaningful, like a common interest to maybe volunteer for the needy, or cooking, or cycling, or a really obscure hobby like parkour, or fishing with your hands, or whatever. Point being is your tribe is out there. Go find them. Connect with them. Enrich their lives because they're going to enrich yours in the process. And that's what living with the DeLuca family did for me. And I wanted to stay in the US. I did not want to go back to Brazil. But at that time, the economics of the country was starting to decline. And so was my family's ability to get by. So in not being able to stay here for college, I had to go back to Brazil. I landed back in my hometown at the age of 16, and I had to go to work. That's what we had to do. You pull resources, you come together and try to make things come alive. So during the period of about four years, all I did was work, help at home, and try to stash a little bit of money aside, always with the mindset of coming back to the US. The economy began to react. My parents' situation got better. We met again and had the conversation, how do I get myself back to the US, this time for college? And by way of the little bit of money that I had saved, some help from my family, a couple of other external resources, I was able to come back to the US in 1995. And this time, I came to Middle Tennessee State University. Uh, today happens to be the largest uh, institution in Tennessee by undergraduate enrollment. It's a great school. And my freshman year was great. I was dean's list post semesters. I found these really great extracurricular activities that were able to advance my career towards where I wanted it to go after graduation. And then at the end of my freshman year, all the funding that we had lined up for the remaining three years, <laughs> done. No more. Finito. Cease to exist. So I was faced with a choice. What do I do? Do I stay? in the US or go back to Brazil. Well, having come as far as I did, I wasn't about to go back. I knew that I needed to finish my school. I needed to get my degree, not just to get my career going and help myself, but help family who I knew for that period needed my help. And so I did. I knuckled ground, I stuck it out, but I had no clue as to how hard it was going to get. Because for during that three-year period, for about four months, I was homeless. I effectively had no place to live. But because of the kindness of my friends, and the inadvertent oversight of university staff, I had a place to sleep most nights. For about eight months during that same period, um, I had one meal a day, typically. A good day was two, but most days was just one. The reason why I'm sharing that story is because not woe is me, but it's because all of us, maybe most of us, have gone through something in life that has made you want to say, you know what, forget it. This is, this is too hard. I'm done. What's the easy way out? For me, it would have been to get on a plane and go back to Brazil. And probably most of us have gone through something like that. And the reason why I, I want to ex explore that topic is because if you look at how local citizens behave, they are the ones who stoke their own fire. When times get tough, they look within, and they find the strength to keep going. Whether it's an indi individual fight or a collective fight, 
they find themselves as their best allies, and you are yours. And if you keep this in mind, and you look around, and you find situations that maybe are tough, you can see that they are perennial, and they're going to pass. And they passed for me with a combination of on-campus work, paid internships, scholarships, and a few other external resources. I was able to finish my degree debt-free in a little shorter time. Got on with my life. Um, lots of things came through. My career advanced. Uh, I met my wonderful wife, Kathy. A few years later, I became um, a U.S. citizen. And I started looking back in my life and thinking, what if I knew then what I know now? In being an international student, if I knew what I know now, could I have gotten maybe in less of a bind financially? Could I have achieved something different? You know, I wonder if there's anything out there that's helping students who are coming to the U.S. for that same kind of journey. And I was shocked, as I did research on the internet, of how much of the volume of information was there, but that there really wasn't anything that could actually help people take a step-by-step -step that would help them be successful. So in order to help international students, I took my time, my finances, and we put, in, and we put together a system to help international students. And it's a step-by-step -step program that allows them to know exactly, hey, before you come to the US, how do you become mentally prepared, financially prepared? Once you arrive here, the host of things of how do you become integrated in the community, how do you identify the right uh, uh, extracurricular activities to uh, advance in your career prior to graduation? Once you graduate, how do you advance in your career, prosper financially, help family at home? So before, during, and after a system. With GDP, Global Development Partners, we created and formulated and perfected an approach to help accelerate the growth of companies, domestically or overseas. Double, sometimes triple-digit growth, depending on their uh, maturity stage. But it's a system that we help them implement to accelerate that. It's a system. The reason why I'm sharing these two examples, guys, is for two reasons. The first one is from personal experience, and you can relate to this as well. People generally want to know, how is the best way for me to get to where I want to go? How do I avoid the most amount of pain to get to do what I want to do? So there's an appetite for that kind of thing. There's a demand. But secondly, regardless of your current academic path, your future, or your current career path, think of your life as a system that has interconnected pieces that when you can spot these stepping stones, you know exactly which steps to take to get to, to where you want to go, what you want to have, and what you want to be. And local citizens, whether uh, deliberately or inadvertently, they have the ability to apply systems thinking. And systems thinking is, uh, briefly stated, I encourage you to look into this, is a, a methodology, a framework to address problems that looks at issues, challenges, as part of an overarching system that has interconnected parts. And if you understand the parts and how they fit together, you can more easily identify opportunities, isolate challenges, and find solutions that get you over those challenges faster and better. Think about the power if all of us applied systems thinking to really big issues in our community. Let's say that here we had a problem with standing water and the proliferation of disease, and we're trying to also come up with a, uh, a renewable food source. And we are collectively able to come up with a system that addresses those issues, and we solve them right here at home. And then we share that system, that same methodology with other communities. They do it. They address the problem. They share it with others. All of a sudden, our circle of influence is immense. And now we have the ability to address the spread of disease and hunger in far corners of the planet. We could change the world. So lots of traits of global citizens, right? They seek a new perspective. They find their tribe wherever they go. They stoke their own fire when things get tough. Systems thinking to get over problems more easily. But there's something much more fundamental and incredibly powerful about globalization. But if you're not paying attention, it could pass you by. Take a look around. Look who's here. Really, take a look. Turn around. Look at all the people who are here. And think of all the different values, the different ideas, different opinions, beliefs, all these differences among us, right? Yet, all of us go through the journey of life together. We're all feeling life. We're all feeling the world in the same way. And we may not agree with each other's perspectives or ideas, but we all have the same feelings of going through life. This means that we all share the feeling that is real. It's legitimate. It's there. It binds us all together. It's like an invisible string that connects all of us. When we're rooted in compassion, it allows us to see that those differences actually bring us together and complement us much more than they divide us. Because it's through compassion that we're able to see that our collective ability to make a positive impact in the world 
is substantially greater than we could ever do by ourselves. Because compassion allows us to find much more of ourselves inside other people. And when we can do that, our ability to reach from home to faraway places is exponentially greater. You're all local citizens. You all have the ability to be catalysts. And we live in this unbelievably special time in the world to make an impact. Take your local citizenship and extend it, leverage it to the maximum to make an impact not just in your life, but in the lives of the people that you touch. Localization changed my life. Perhaps it can change yours too. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm Jeff Joyce. <laughs>